All right, so today I'm very excited we're building turbo headers for this car. I think this is gonna be two-parter because I don't think I have enough material to finish it up today, but I got plenty to show you. So first things first, we gotta get that exhaust housing mounted in place. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're just taking the turbo part so we can just take just the compressor housing and get it mocked up in the car. It'll be, it'll be a little bit easier because I believe it'll be a lot lighter, it'll be easier to keep in place. We started out by mounting our turbo in the engine bay. We welded a V-band flange to a rectangle piece of tube and then just tack welded it to the chassis. It was very simple, very quick, but also very strong. We then started working on the collector because once we have the collector built, we can then begin building all the tubes that go from the header flange to where they need to go on said collector. What we want to do now is we want this to be as perfectly flat as we could possibly get it. And what I like to do is I'll just put it down on my little table right here. And sometimes if they're not flat, they'll rock a little bit. As we're sanding, you know, if we stay in the same place, our belt's gonna put a grain across this. When we're done, it'll have one smooth grain going straight across this and we know we're flat. So what we're gonna do now is anytime you cut you know, in your bend or even outside of it a little bit, where it's been bent, it's gonna be a little egg shaped. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna squeeze this back until we can get it as round as close to round as we can. And sometimes you really have to squeeze the heck out of these things and they spring out quite a bit when you release it. All right, so that's not bad there. It's still got a little bit of egginess to it. We can probably squeeze it again. Sometimes when you are doing this with a vise and you squeeze them, sometimes you can accidentally flat spot them but when we go to tack this, what we'll do is anywhere we have a high spot, we'll put it on the jaws of our vise and we'll just clamp it. And as we go around and we do that several times, eventually after we've tacked this enough, we'll have a nice, you know, uniform, uniform, uniform joint. collector flange thing made and so we've got it all tacked up like we like it and now like we were talking about earlier where we have you know the tubes to where they're a little eggy so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna massage it in the vise a little bit and we're gonna get some tacks as we go around this and you'll see if I get this position right here as I start to squeeze you see it just closes that ledge right up so now we can tack it. So we'll go around and do this, you know, probably three or four times, get, getting tacks all around it. And eventually what we'll have is a nice flush fit all the way around it. Before welding the tubes, they're polished by this fancy polishing tool. Now this isn't necessary and it can be done instead with Scotch-Brite, but we had it so we figured why not use it.
On stainless headers, all the joints should fit perfectly. When tack welding, you shouldn't even require any filler rod except on thick flanges. Once you get a hang of making and fitting tubes, it's all about getting into a flow and working on finishing one entire side, and try not to make your garage a complete mess. So I'm really starting to love the way these headers are coming out. Um, I couldn't be happier actually with how they've come so far. Um, obviously half of it's built, but that's because I ran out of material. So next time you will see the rest of it built, including welding it all out. So if you want to learn that, or just simply enjoy watching me do this kind of stuff, check it out next time, only here on Zip Time.